again and begin a fresh start. Help me find my direction. Place a burden in my heart. Lord, take me back to that old landmark. Lord, take me back to that old landmark where I made a new commitment and begin a fresh start. Help me find. My direction, place a burden in my heart. Lord, take me back to that old landmark. Oh, Lord, take me back. To that old landmark Where I made a new commitment And begin a fresh start Help me find my direction Place a bridge Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Oh, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first. Take me back, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Oh, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I first. Take me back, dear Lord, to the blue place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I first.
I've been to Calvary. I can say I've seen the Lord. I've been to Calvary. I'm a witness of His love. Each day.
say to somebody who's listening to us this morning that there is room at the cross for you. Hallelujah. What a wonderful message the cross brings. What a wonderful hope the cross of Jesus Christ brings. What a joy to know that sins are forgiven at the cross of Jesus. What a joy to know that burdens are lifted at the cross of Jesus. What a joy to know that lives are changed at the cross of Jesus. What a hope to know that eternal life is promised at the cross of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard a song the other day. It said, there was a cross on a hill called Calvary. Two pieces of rough timber on a hill. Amen. Through his hands and through his feet, he took you and me. Angels watched as he died for the Lord. Walked away, but he chose it. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to invite Sister Manning, Nicole Manning, at this time to come. Praise God to pray the opening prayer for us. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, as we come before you right now, here we are so unworthy of your blood, so unworthy of your love, but yet you died on Calvary for us. And so, Lord God, as we come before you and we think about that one more time, the fact that you knew us, yet you loved us, he whose glory makes the heavens shine. We are so unworthy, God, of your blood and your mercy. But when you were on the cross, you, we were on your mind and you stayed there even though you knew who we were. What a God. What a God. Jesus, ever-loving God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And so, God, we don't want to take your love for granted. We don't want to take your love for granted. We want, oh God, to live the way you want us to live. We want to be dutiful, Lord Jesus. And we want to, oh God, to be faithful and true. Oh God, help us, Lord Jesus, oh God, that the fruits of your spirit, the temperance, oh God, and everything. Oh, Lord Jesus, will just exude from us. And so, Lord Jesus, others will come to know you. Because to know you is life. And Lord Jesus, we would have come to know you. And we want others to do the same. 
We thank you for what you're going to do this morning. We thank you, oh God, for the love, oh God, Jesus, that has got to overflow somebody's heart. Whether they are outside hearing us, our Lord Jesus, online, oh God, I, I come into this sanctuary. I pray that some soul will repent, oh God, of their sins, and they will be baptized in your name and be filled with your Holy Ghost. And so, Lord, one more time, touch our singers, our musician. Oh, God, moderator, Lord Jesus, and the one who will bring your word. Most of all, Lord God, I pray that your spirit, oh God, will dwell in this place. And as we worship you, Lord God, your praises, oh God, the praises will go up in your presence and your spirit. And everything will just be so wonderful in this place. We thank you for what you have done and what you are going to do. We don't want to leave here the same way we came. Jesus, we want more of you. More of you. More of you, Lord Jesus. Because in this time, oh God, we have to keep our focus. Our focus, oh God, is heaven. Everything around us, we know, God. Sin, shame, and disgrace. And you said, Lord God... That these are the things we were going to see in the end. So help us to look up. Keep our eyes on you as we live each day. And as you will take full control of this service, we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The old rugged cross made the difference. I just love to sing about the cross. In a life bound by heartache and defeat. So I praise Him forever and ever. I dread to drive with it. It's very, very painful. And when I think of Jesus taking nails in his hands and in his feet for my sin, hanging there on the cross for my sin, suffering, bearing shame and guilt for my sin, dying, yielding up his life for my sin. I can only say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because the old rugged cross makes a difference in a
Praise God. And at this time, I invite you to turn in your Pentecostal hymnals to hymn number 41, an old account settled. That's what the cross does. You want to pay your debt, so if you go into a business place and you see a sign that says, pay at this window, praise God. You're going to see a sign that says, pay at this window, that's a cross. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was standing of sin yet unforgiven. My name was on the cross and many seek me I went on to the people and said to them, Love of God, Love of God, Love of God.
yourself. If you repented of your sins, if you've been baptized in the name of Jesus, if you receive the Holy Ghost, point yourself and say, and my record's clear today. For Jesus was my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago. And if you have not yet done so, and your record can be clear today, Jesus can wash your sins away. And your account can be settled in full today. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. That's why we sing and dance and shout in church. Because we know our sins are paid. Hallelujah. The Bible said they are cast behind the back of God into the sea of forgetfulness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. At this time, we are inviting two persons to come to read the scriptures. Sister Catherine Manning will be reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verses 1 to 9. And then Sister Erica Hamilton will read from St. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. The Second Chronicles 30, verses 1 to 9, read by Sister Catherine. And then St. Matthew 3, verses 1 to 10, read by Sister Erica. Praise God. Second Chronicles 30, verses 1 to 9. Um, I'll read in your hearing. And, oh, all the phone it's amen. amen. And Hezekiah sent, and Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently. Neither had the people gathered themselves together in Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done it of a long time in such short as it is written. So the post went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. And be not ye like your fathers and like your brethren, which trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation as ye see. Now be not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary, which he, he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. And at last, for if ye turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall, shall find compassion before them that lead them captive, so that they shall come again into this land, for the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and, he, and will not turn away his face from you if he return unto you. The word of the Lord. Praise God. Sister Erica will now read from St. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Praise God. St. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. If you are following it, say amen. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judah, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. 
And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loin, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourself, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of th these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Ten and last. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, if every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is you down and cast into the fire. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. And the theme for this morning's service is let us return to our God. Praise the name of Jesus. Let us return to our God. If we have wandered away from Jesus... If we have wandered away from his church, if we have turned away from his righteousness, today he's saying to us, let us return to the Lord our God. Praise the name of Jesus. At this time, I'm inviting Sister Cassandra Cornwall who will come to do the welcome. Bless the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful feeling when you know you have found what you've been looking for. The songwriter is, never, is not wrong. Bless the Lord. I just want to welcome everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. Those who are on YouTube, welcome. And I just want all of us just to worship the Lord. Because we are here to what? Worship the Lord. God bless you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Sister Cassandra. Let me just add my welcome to all those who are here in the sanctuary, those who are hearing us via the speakers on the outside, and those who are joining us via the electronic media. It's truly a pleasure to be in the presence of God this morning. Amen. Praise God. Just some announcement for the coming week and a few upcoming Praise God. So, of course, uh, right after serve the service, worship service here, we're going to go into a Sunday school. Praise God. And even now at this time at Mother Church and Nugent Street, they are in their Sunday school to be followed by the worship service. We continue on our 21 days fast. Praise God until February 13th. And you would have seen the schedule circulated for week two, which we are in. And uh, di different persons and groups of us on the different days. And this, of course, is in preparation for our saints meeting on the 14th of February. Praise God. Tomorrow, praise God, the Region 2 Sons and Daughters Prayer and Fasting meeting will be held via Zoom. Praise God. So at 5 a.m., there will be morning manna. And then at 12 noon to 1 p.m., there is a meditation hour. And then at 8 p.m. there will be a prayer meeting. Praise God. If you can join at all, the meeting ID is 870-7553-3399. That is 870-7553-3399. And the password 845676. Amen. So it's 8. Four, five, six, seven, six. That's tomorrow. Of course, on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., we have our prayer meeting via WhatsApp. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. And then on Wednesday at 9 a.m. to 12 noon, there's prayer and fasting service at 58 Nugent Street at Mother Church. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. And then at 8.30 p.m., we continue with our Bible study via the Pentecostal Lighthouse YouTube channel. Amen. Amen. For next Sunday, we have 
at 6 a.m. we have Right and Divide in the Word and Fame 95 FM. Then at 7 a.m. we have prayer here in the sanctuary at King Street. And I want to commend those who turned out for prayer this morning. Praise God. You know, our former pastor, Pastor Stewart, he would, would, used to say he would rather pray for one hour and preach for five minutes than pray for five minutes and preach for an hour. And I remember Brother Simpson preached a message that said that the axe is dull. You have to put more effort to cut something. Praise God. So we want to come out for prayer. Praise God before our live stream service at 7.30, followed by Sunday school. And of course at Mother Church, they come out for prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. Then 8 o'clock is Sunday school, followed by worship service. At 5 in the evening, praise God, because it's Mission Sunday next Sunday, we will also have service. And I, I'll inform you later on which, uh, which of the two assemblies is going to be held, whether here or at Nugent Street. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And then upcoming events, I mentioned our saints meeting on the 14th of February, that's Sunday, and then details will be announced. Um, you'll get the details later on. And of course, we expect everyone to be at saints meeting because that's Valentine's Day. And if we sing, I, lo I love the Lord, then we should be out. Amen. Amen. We can't sing, I love the Lord and abandon him on Valentine's Day. Amen. 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 Praise God. And then, of course, the following Monday from the 15th to the 18th, there will be national conference, our annual national conference, 75th. That's a long time, you know. Our 75th annual national conference. And, of course, you will get further details as the time draws closer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm just going to invite the singers now. So come, as Sister Cassandra will lead us in singing out, thank you for the cross. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, let us worship the Lord. Let us worship the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price you paid. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you
Hallelujah. And truly, Jesus, Jesus is worthy of all our praise, all our adoration, all our offerings. There is nothing that we can give to Jesus that we can say, oh, he has, we have given too much. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. We invite you all to stand. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Because our God desires to speak to us. And this morning he has chosen as his voice, his servant, Deacon Jason Thompson. And we invite Deacon Thompson to come now under the power of the Holy Ghost to speak to our hearts. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Can you lift our hands around us? Magnify our King and our Savior. Hallelujah. The one who has gone to prepare a place for his people. And the one that is coming back to take us out of this troubled world. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody worship him right now. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He deserve all the worship. He deserve all the praise. Jesus. Come on, fill the atmosphere with worship right now. My God. Hallelujah. Let your praise and your worship go on before him as a memorial. Hallelujah. Come on, let's remind him with our praise. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us bow. Let's kneel before the Lord, our maker. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. From the rise of the sun, even unto the going down the same, he deserve it. You know, the songwriter penned a very beautiful song. I said, Jesus, I've forgotten the words that you have spoken, promises that burns within my heart have not grown dim. With a doubting heart, I follow the path of earthly wisdom. Forgive me for my unbelief. Renew the fire again. And it goes on and say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. Probably I'm speaking to somebody who has strayed from the flock. And the Lord wants to call you home this morning. He wants to call you from a life of wasted years. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless him some more this morning. Hallelujah. We just sang the song about the cross. For one to be put upon a cross be beaten and to be killed it was like a curse for one to be up on a cross but he became sin who knew no sin hallelujah praise God could we turn our Bibles to book of Romans 8 we're gonna read from 35 to 39 This is now the Apostle Paul speaking here in the book of Romans. And I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, Anchor in the last days. Turn to your neighbor and say, Anchor in the last days. Turn to somebody and tell them to anchor in the last days. Well, you have found it. All of us, we're going to read together because we want to get the word of God into our spirit and into our system. We're going to read at the count of two. One, two. Who, Who shall, shall separate, separate us from, from the love of Christ? Christ? 
shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or darkness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to ask Minister Manning to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God for your cross we thank you for the love that drove you to calvary and we thank you for the salvation which you freely offer to all who will come through your death your burial and your resurrection from the dead your servant deacon thomas my god has been one of those to benefit from your sacrifice and you have raised him up and for such a time as this now be with the mouth of your servant, my God, and be with his spirit, that he may speak, thus said the Lord, as an holy oracle of the living God. Anoint him refresh right now, and let the words go forth in power and might, and touch the hearts of the hearers. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's worship him right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you look at all oh, the scripture started, I would say, who shall separate us? Who shall separate us? Turn to your neighbor and say, who shall separate us? Turn to your neighbor. The scripture is now asking a question, who shall separate us? Brethren, we can say for a fact that we're living in the last days. When we look and we make our own personal assessment, we are in the last days. Other day, something was shown to me. It was the newly appointed U.S. Transport and Security Minister. While on his appointment, he paused for a moment. And what he did, he was introducing his husband. At his appointment what this is saying to us is that we are living in the last days and the Bible said in the last days perilous times shall come for man shall be lovers of them all self more than lovers of God and he was very bold to make such a declaration so we recognize that we are in Trouble sometimes. Come on, somebody. Worship the Lord with me this morning. So, what the Lord did is that the Lord leave them over to their own reptobate mind, over to their own vile affection. We have seen some things that have been popping up in the last days. And what this is saying to us as a church, we have to be in a state of readiness as a church. We are the bride of Christ. We are the call out one. We are the ecclesia. God has called us and reserved us for such a time as this. Praise God. So the man of God was now given an account. Because guess what happened? 
our boat is going to come under a lot of pressure. It's going to be tested by the winds and the waves that are blowing the world today. But we have to ensure that our anchor holds and grips a solid rock. And that solid rock we're speaking about today is Jesus. So we're anchoring in the last days in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul recognized that guess what happened? There are some things in life that is there to test us as Christian. And he was saying now, who are what shall separate us from the love of God? And he outlined a list of things, my God. Amen. Who are what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Job found himself in a situation in which everything that he possessed was taken from him. I want to ask you a question. What if the Lord planned to take some of your possession or some of your substance or even touch your health? Will you still remain faithful to him as a servant? When you're both is tossed in two and four on the sea of life. When the waves and when turbulence take you, when you're going through your journey through life, what is able to separate us from the love of Jesus? If you love the Lord, it will draw you closer to him. When you love somebody, you want to be around them. You want to be in their presence. And here now, the servant of God, the apostle, was now given an account. Because he went through some experiences. And this Paul that we speak about here in the word of God, he was one of them that were persecuting the church and the Christians. So guess what happened now? He found himself in a similar situation. So he got some of his own medicine. So guess what happened? He now was preparing himself to deal with persecution. I'm going to tell you something. The church is coming under some every persecution. The church is coming under some serious kinds of pressure. There are some winds that are blowing out there. Some very strong storms with, that are blowing out there. But we have to stand firm in Jesus. Hallelujah. And the man of God goes on. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. So henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown. Come on, somebody, worship him. There's laid up for us a crown. The song said, there is a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. After Job was there, let her go back to Job. And all the bad news keep on coming in. Your cattle have died. Your daughters and your sons, you know, they were having a little party. And something tragic struck and they died. Your health is now under threat. And in Jamaica, our health is under threat because of this virus that we're dealing with. 
And while Job was going through all of this, he recognized in all of this, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And Job recognized that he was going through his test. There comes a point in our walk where all of us have to go through our own personal tests. And while Job was going through his tests, I've thou considered my servant Job. Have you considered my servant Courtney Dennis? Have you conserved? Have you considered my servant Claude Manning? And the Lord allowed the devil to touch his health. Touch his health, but don't take his life. Skin for skin and bone for bone. And while his health was deteriorating, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Naked I came into this world and naked shall I return. We are pilgrim and sojourner. We are just passing through. This world is not our home. So I want to say to you, don't get too comfortable down here. Because the man of God, Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. Imagine you labor so hard and you acquire a nice house. Nice furnitures on the inside. And you acquire the latest car. But after you're gone, somebody has come and inherit all of that. All of this that people are running down and clamoring after is just vanity and vexation of spirits. Vanity. Because the world that we're living in is in trouble. The only solution we have in this world is Jesus. So while Paul was going through his tests, and all these things was coming at him, he was saying, what is able to separate us from the love of Christ? Nakedness, peril, sword. All of these things he had to deal with, even false brethren. I'm going to tell you something. You will have some people that you consider to be your friend, but when you're going through your trying times and your tests, they will step off and leave you. Man, don't you about shatter. So I want to say to somebody, let Jesus be your friend. I've seen it. Job closest friend was his wife. And she looked at him and she was saying, Look at you saying your servant got all these years, and look what the Lord may come into you. Curse God and die. When you're going to your test and you're tried and you're naked and destitute, are you gonna curse God? <laughs> Are you going to murmur, complain? I want to tell you something. He don't brought you this far to leave you. The God of his servant will never leave you or forsake you. The man of God said, I was young, but now I've all, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I received when begging bread. When your mother and your father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. No, we are living in a world that there's a lot of single parents and the Lord has to become a lot of father and mother for a lot of children. For my personal life, I was a very wayward child. But I want to tell you that when the Lord transforms a life, it will never be the same. You know, when Paul got the letters to be signed, 
And he was now on the Damascus road because he, were, he was pursuing the Christian. He was out for blood. He wanted to destroy them. Get rid of the Christians. And guess what happened? Jesus stopped him in his path. Many of us, if we should confess, we had our agendas to live it up. Just like the prodigal son did. Till him go outside and he, he buck him too. And he recognized how hot it is to buck you too. And when he had that encounter with Jesus, the Lord put him on a compulsory fasting. No meat. Nothing to drink. Listen to the question. When he encountered Jesus, he said to him, what will thou have me to do? The Lord fixed him and sent him on his merry way. And if the Lord did not fix some of us and stop us in our path, some of us probably would be in prison. Some of us would be homeless or be wa walking, eating out of the garbage bin. So we have nothing to boast about. It's the mercy of God why we are still here. It's the mercy of God why we are not consumed. It's the mercy of God why some of us don't end up out at Bellevue or up at Windward Road. I've seen it. Have you ever been to Spanish Sun and see people sleep in the sun at in the sun and cardboard? Have you ever seen it? <laughs> that could have been you. That could have been me. Homeless and destitute. So when Paul now, his life was turned around. <laughs> in come to realize that all along, it was sincerely wrong. Yes. You can't fight against Jesus and win. Yes, you can't come against the church and win. Yes. Because when you're fighting the church, you're fighting Jesus. Yes. So whatever storms are blowing in your life, I want to say to you, stand still and watch God work in your life. We may be going through some struggles down here now, but better days are coming by and by. When we reach the city in the sky, sorrows will be over and joy will come at last. Come on, somebody worship the Lord with me this morning. We have to finish. We are in a race in which we have to finish. And I'm saying to you, anchor yourself in these last days. Take a grip, my brother, take a grip. Hold fast and never let go. No, it's not the time to let go of Jesus. Take a firmer grip on your salvation. Despite the great host that is coming against you, take a firm grip. And Jesus. Curse God and die. Don't make any sense. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, many people in the church and outside of church are struggling now. That's a reality. Financially. Struggling to pay your bills. Struggling to pay the mortgage. Probably land has said, look here. At the last month, may I give you. Your last chance. But guess what happened? Weeping may endure for a night. But I want to tell you that joy is on the way. Don't lay up, don't lay up any treasures on earth. Where moth and rust are this trouble. Lay them up in heaven. I want you to check your heavenly account. And see how you can make a more greater investment in the kingdom of God. Oh, yes. Yes. That is what, that what is going to be matter in the end. I'm going to tell you something. The flip side about that. A lot of people are investing in this world. But guess what? They're going to lose their earthly investments. 
But you see, when you invest in Jesus, there is no loss whatsoever. We sang it in him 21, 41. The whole account was large and growing every... You see, when you're out in sin, the account keep on accumulating. Jesus is so good. Imagine, he came and him look at our account. I know him do. Him write it off for all those who do account. Jesus, the whole account was what? Large and growing every day because I was always sinning and never tried to pay. But when I look ahead, and so much pain and ho- we went unto G. Come on, somebody, and settle it long ago. Somebody to settle it this morning. Somebody need to ask you to freeze that account. My God, come on, stand with me this morning. My Yorobo Shanda, here Kodobo Shanda. Jesus is about to seize those accounts that have been growing over these years. Hallelujah. Jesus. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Paul recognized the apostle that the account that he had was growing. But when I met Jesus, when he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, oh, what a change. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change. My God, his name was even changed. My God. So as we about to close off, I want you to, because as humans, sometimes we have more than one account, don't it? And I want you to go back and check some of those old accounts that you had with, when you're out in the world. And if they're still active, ask the Lord to write them off this morning. We can't afford to allow those accounts to weigh us down. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. This was a man that was about to be killed. But henceforth, so whatever is coming or whatever is about to come, Whatever problem or circumstances you're faced with. Anchor in the last days. And allow Jesus to fix it for you. Probably there's something in your life you have been trying to fix all these years. And I want to tell only Jesus can fix it. Allow Jesus to fix those problems in your life. And you will have no regrets as we anchor in the last days. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Do you believe? Thank you, Jesus. I know that faith is easy when a life is going well. But will you still believe in me when your life's a living hell? And when all the things around you seem to quickly fade away, 
there's just one thing that I would want to know. Against a lot, will you believe what I have said? When it seems impossible, will you believe every promise I have made? Will you receive? Yes, I will. I know how bad it hurts you hey. when your loved one life came to an end and when they had to leave you you said you'd never love again but will you trust that I can help you and I never turn away will you trust me child no matter Come what may, what if it hurts? I trust you, Lord. What if you cry? I trust you, Lord. What if it doesn't work the first time that you try? What if you call? Nothing shall separate us. Famine, pestilence, darkness, tribulation, life, death, height, death. Nothing. Nothing. You know, the world has been waiting for all over a year, almost a year for a COVID vaccine. In fact, it's over a year from it broke out in Wuhan in China in late 2019. We finally have about six or seven different vaccines. Now we heard here we have about six or seven different variants. And they're not showing the old vaccines. So it's an old vaccine. I heard this on the BBC the other day. The man said he's not sure if the old vaccine. So some vaccines that have not even yet been rolled out are now old vaccines. So we can't, we could wait a year for a vaccine and by the time you get it, it's old. But there's a God whose promises are new. Hallelujah. The Bible said they are new every day. Hallelujah. God doesn't give you warm over promises. God doesn't give you leftover promises. God doesn't give you yesterday promises. Every promise of Jesus is new every day. So you may have said it thousands of years ago but brother Courtney is as new today as when he made it back in the garden of Eden to Adam it's as new today as when he made it to Abraham and if you will trust Jesus today the salvation that he offers is as new today as when Peter said it 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost 
repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost do you trust Jesus enough to let go of the old account and start a new life in him wherever you are if you are willing and ready to follow Jesus just raise your hands just raise your hands and we're going to pray for you this morning. Come on, just raise your hands. And all you have to say, I trust you, Lord. All of you say, I trust you, Jesus. My God, we thank you for the words of assurance. First written by your servant, Paul. And spoken afresh this morning by your servant, Deacon Thompson. My God, they are new every morning so we don't judge them by the time they were written we judge them by who made them and because you are the eternal God the everlasting God the ancient of days every promise you make is brand new every day and all your promises in Jesus are yea and amen they cannot pass away and so, Father, we want to acknowledge those who have raised their hands this morning, saying they want to trust you, they want to serve you, they want to follow you, they want to be saved. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will make record of those hands. And those, my God, whom you cannot lead to here at Talking Street, you will direct them, my God, to a Bible believe in Jesus name apostolic church just as you led brother Spence to 58 Nugent Street my God just as you led others here to Tooking Street I've heard testimony of persons who got on the wrong bus and ended up at Wildman Street Jesus lead them Lord Jesus to a place where they can be baptized in your name lead them oh God to a place of worship where they preach the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that they may be filled with your spirit. Lead them to a house, my God, of praise, where they will live for you until you come. Lord God, we may not see on this earth all the lives that you have transformed through this broadcast. But my God, we wait in heaven. And we just ask that you just point them out to us so we can rejoice with you. We lay no claim to any soul because you said by your servant Ezekiel, all souls belong to you. But my God, if we can be used by you to save a soul, to you, O oh Lord Jesus, be the glory. We give you praise. Oh God, touch someone this morning. Continue to keep your hand upon your servant, my God, upon his wife, upon his two sons, upon their two sons. My God, Joshua has been baptized in your name. We pray for the filling of the Holy Ghost. We pray for Caleb, my God, that he too will be baptized and filled before too long. Continue to keep your servant under your wing and use him, my God, mightily for the honor and glory of your name and your kingdom. I pray for everyone who's here this morning and everyone who's following us on the electronic media. We say, oh God, let your will be done. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And I ask you to raise your right hands. Praise the name of Jesus. Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from when cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God.